To create textures in Photoshop, we have to examine how the selection system works underneath the hood in Photoshop. Selections play a very powerful role in our texturing process, so let's take a look. I brought up on screen just a very cool, simple, rusty metallic texture that I want to incorporate onto one of my 3D models back over in Modo. The selection tools can be found in the left-hand toolbar. Now I have the marquee selection tool uh, already activated. And what this allows me to do is to draw, uh, left click and drag and kind of draw out a selection box. Now, what you're seeing on screen here is the part of the image that Photoshop has, is now focused on. Whenever I think of selections, I think of, uh, I think of a system that really focuses the computer on the pixels that are uh, on the inside of my selection box. So right now, Photoshop is only going to care about the pixels on the interior of this box. Whatever's on the inside, that's what's going to be edited. It's kind of like Moto. Whatever's selected is going to be edited. Photoshop works off of a very, very similar process. So now that I have this, this section of my photograph uh, selected, I can begin to manipulate it. For example, if I go over here and grab the Move tool and click on the inside, look what moves. Only the part of the image that was selected has been edited. I want to hit Undo, for example, and to further illustrate the power of selections, I want to switch over to the Brush tool and uh, I'm going to load in just kind of a nice bright color so you guys can see what's going on. Now check it out. I'm only painting or I'm only allowed to throw down some color where I have selected. Okay, so this, this, the, the system of selections is really super powerful. It allows us to go in and focus Photoshop on what we want it to do or more importantly, where we want Photoshop to work and to, uh, to make some to make some edits. Okay, so this is pretty cool. So I can just go in here, paint all this. Okay, and mission accomplished. Now, we've added a selection by choosing the marquee selection tool, but we want to deselect it now. We want to drop this selection so we can continue to work on the rest of the image. Deselecting any of our uh, selections in Photoshop requires us to do one of two things. We can either A, go all the way up to the top of the screen where it says select and choose deselect from the menu, or what I would suggest you do is just commit to memory Command D or uh, Control D if you're on the PC. This keyboard shortcut is automatically going to deselect the pixels we have down in our canvas and allow us to work with the entire image. So here's the cool thing about Photoshop and how it works with selections. If we select something, that's the only part of the image that's going to be uh, that's only going to be uh, worked on. So if I select this guy over here, uh, you know I can go in and as I just showed you, it's only going to paint over there. But check it out. If nothing is selected in our scene everything is going to be edited. So right now I don't have a single pixel selected so I can paint anywhere on my scene, okay? Now what this allows us to do or what selections allow us to do is to focus. It allows us to focus our editing on what we want to change and where we want to change it. Okay, so I'm going to go back to the original here because clearly I don't want it to be all red. Okay, let's examine some of the other selection tools that we have at our disposal here in Photoshop, because it's all about selections. Once we can, once we can wrangle selections and focus, focus the application on specific pixels, a lot of opportunities open up to us. So inside this button here, uh, we see in the in the icon, there's a little black triangle on the lower right hand corner. This means that there are nested uh, tools inside this icon. And if we left click and hold, you can see that we have a number of marquee selection tools. We have rectangular, which is going to allow us to draw out a rectangular box. We also have elliptical, which is going to allow us to draw an oval or a circle. There we go. And FYI, on both the rectangular and elliptical, if you hold down the shift key, it's going to constrain the proportions of our selection uniformly. So meaning it's going to create a perfect circle. Okay, and let me hold down, let me deselect what I got and hold down the shift key. And there we go, perfect circle. If I go back to the rectangular marquee selection tool, do the same thing, hold down shift and draw out a box, it's going to be a perfect square. So that's kind of a nifty little trick. I want to hit Command D to select it. There's some other selection tools in the same drop down menu. We got the single row, which is just going to select a single row of pixels horizontally. And we also have a vertical one as well. So you got two different options if you want to uh, go in and work with just one row. Below the marquee selection tools, we have this guy. And this guy's kind of fun because it allows us to go in and create custom uh, custom shape selections. So this first one, the lasso tool, allows us to go in. I'm just left clicking and dragging a very funky custom shape. And there you go. Kind of looks like a, a weird dinosaur. Here's a leg, here's a leg, a, uh, a tail, and I see a horn over there. 
It's like seeing images in a cloud, sorry. Uh, in addition, this is probably one of my most favorite, the polygonal lasso tool. It gives us a very similar control set from what we just saw with the lasso selection, but it's only gonna create straight lines. So I'm just left clicking here and I can create a very angular selection. Double clicking anywhere on the screen will close the selection as you can see here, but it's all gonna be angular. I love this, this, is, this makes my life uh, inside of Photoshop a little bit easier because it allows me to very quickly select areas but accurately, okay? Um, also, we have the magnetic lasso tool, which is kind of cool. It's going to go in and analyze the color of all the pixels and it's going to try its best. It's going to try its best. Let's see if I can do it here to find the edges of a particular color. Now, I'm dragging around this orange chunk here and it's doing a pretty good job of trying to find the borders of the edge in the blue. And then if I hover back over the first point, yeah, now I have a selection. Okay, pretty cool. Um, in addition, we also have the magic wand and the quick selection tool, which are our additional tools that will allow us to go in and choose ranges of color to, uh, to produce a selection. Okay, selections are a huge, huge part of the Adobe Photoshop workflow. Get used to working inside of selections. We want to be able to go in and focus the computer to look at very specific pixels. Now, let's pretend here for a second that I select that shape, just kind of a big rectangle, but then I want to go back in and change the shape after the fact. Well, there's nothing that says that I couldn't go over and draw a new shape, okay? You can always just start over, but you can use the existing selection that you have and then edit it. Let me show you. At the top of the screen here, we have this selection pull-down menu, and all of these guys are, um, are, are four selections. And look at this. I love this. This is kind of a hidden Mickey inside of Photoshop. We can even save our selections and use them over and over and over again. I love, 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 love that, okay? But what I like is this transform selection, okay? This transform selection tool will allow you to edit your shape. Okay, and now, if you notice, it's kind of hard to see, but there are little corners, there's little boxes, uh, like the free transform tool uh, at the corners of all of our selections, and now I can very quickly go in and edit that shape. After you edit your shape and you're happy with it, make sure you go up, up here to the top of the screen, hit the little checkbox to confirm the edit, and now I got our selection. I'm happy with this, so now I can continue editing and working in just this region. So to further illustrate the power of selections, um, not only do selections work with the move tool and copy and paste and things like that, but it also works with the entire effects library in Photoshop. So check it out. Top of the screen where it says filter, I'm just gonna apply a Gaussian blur, okay? But because I have a selection already in place, what do you think is gonna happen? Where is this blur going to happen on the screen? Is it gonna happen on the interior in here, on the selected pixels, or on the outside? Well, let's find out. So filter, blur, Gaussian blur, it's gonna bring open my little popover menu, and right now, for whatever reason, it's set to 83.2 uh, 83 pixels. I wanna bring it down some, but I think you can see that it's only blurring on the interior of my selection, okay? Super powerful. I want to hit cancel because uh, maybe perhaps I want the exterior of my selection to be edited. I want to leave the interior alone and I want to blur all of this stuff around the outside. So check it out. We can go back to our selection pull down menu and ooh, there it is right there. Inverse. This is going to flip the selection. Okay. Now when you flip the selection, and sometimes it's kind of hard to see or understand what's selected, but whatever I, what I'm looking for are the, uh, the marching ants, the indicator going around the the, uh, the selection indicator. With, we, we call it the marching ants because it kind of looks like a whole little line of marching ants going around our image. But if there's one going all the way up here around the border of our image, we know that we've selected from here all the way out and vice versa. So this part of this uh, the image is not is not selected at all. To prove my point, let's apply that same Gaussian blur again. So blur, Gaussian blur and check it out, what's been changed? Yeah, this is remade the same, and this over here is now blurred. I wanna hit cancel one more time, and we're gonna invert this bad boy once again, so now I have the interior pixels selected. And check it out, in addition to uh, inverting and deselecting, we can also modify our, our, our selections with some very cool features, okay? My biggest, uh, my biggest fan here, or my, my favorite one, is the feather which is gonna soften the edges, if you will, of your selection. 
we get a, a, a pixel value. So we'll just do 40 pixels. And you can see that the corners are now a little bit more round. And if we do that same Gaussian blur example one more time, check it out. Check it out. We're no longer getting a hard edge on our blur. It's kind of soft there. And that's all thanks to that feather command. Explore some of these other selection modifiers. They're in this right here. Um, I think you're going to find it's extraordinarily powerful. We've just only scratched the surface of what you can do with selections. There's really a lot of uh, a lot of functionality built into the selection uh, engine. But I just wanted to introduce the idea and the concept that Photoshop is only going to select, or excuse, excuse me, it's only going to edit and influence the pixels that are selected. So the selection tools inside of Photoshop, extraordinarily powerful, and they'll help you at every step of the way.